German Obligations to Greece, Part 7 Repatriation of Antiquities Germans looting cultural treasures of their time In the middle of Berlin, you climbed the staircase that was carved by the ancient Greeks of Pergamon in 170 BC. The entire altar of Zeus of Pergamon in Berlin, hence the name of the museum, Museum of Pergamon in Berlin. In a different hall, the temple of Victorious Athena, and on the facade of the temple is written in Greek, Vasilevs Evmenis Athena Nikiforo, and in English, King Evmenis to Victorious Athens. In another hall, the entire gate of the Agora of Miletus, masterpieces which have nothing to do with the location therein, cut off from their natural environment, from the places that gave birth to them. This is a veritable stripping of ancient cities. The Cliptotech of Munich, with the illegally extracted antiquities from the Temple of Affair in Aegina. This is smuggling of antiquities that even Elgin would be jealous of. Germany is a universal collector exhibiting antiquities that have been smuggled. The historical researcher and writer George Lekaki says, It seems that Germans have the desire to acquire some level of culture by stealing other countries' antiquities. Of course, the Germans get rich by selling tickets and expensive albums in their museums. As if this tripping of ancient cities was not enough, the Germans in the Second World War made the biggest art plundering in human history. Never before World War II did the cultural heritage of the peoples experience such monstrous looting. During World War II, the Germans hid the art, gold, and other valuable stolen items in various storage areas. This picture illustrates an American soldier at the end of the war inspecting works of art stolen by Germans and hidden in a church in the city of Ellingen. Here, Generals Eisenhower, Bradley and Patton inspect art treasures stolen and hidden by the Germans in an underground salt mine in Austria. Various salt mines in Austria and Germany were used as hiding places for goods stolen by the Germans. One of them was the salt mine at Altausi in Austria, whose deepest tunnels were more than a mile into the mountain. The Germans built floors, walls and shelves, as well as a laboratory deep inside the chambers. The contents based on the German archives were 6,577 paintings, 23,000 drawings or watercolors, 954 prints, 137 pieces of sculpture, hundreds of pieces of furniture and other items of value. Along with... Eight boxes marked Marble Do Not Drop, each one of which contained 1,100 pounds, that is about 500 kilograms, of bombs for the destruction of the artwork in case the Germans lost the war. Fortunately, a select group of allied men and women from 13 countries better known as the Monuments Men, who had experienced the arts as museum directors and curators, art scholars and professors, artists and architects. They risked their lives sweeping Europe to prevent the Germans from destroying thousands of years of civilization. In April 1945, as Allied troops approached the salt mine, Germans gave the order to blow up Altausi. However, this order was not carried out. The disaster was averted at the last minute by the local mine management, storekeepers and miners who removed the bombs from the mine. After the capture of Altausi in May 1945 by an American infantry unit, 
the monument men took over. The master painting of Adoration of the Mystic Lamb by Jean van Eyck, also called the Ghent Altarpiece, which is a large, complex, 15th century polyptych altarpiece, was found in Altaussi and returned to the Cathedral of Belgium. The Madonna of Bruges, the famous marble sculpture by Michelangelo, which was smuggled by the Germans and hidden in mattresses in a Red Cross truck, was also found in Altaussi and returned to Belgium. Loads of treasure began to return from Germany back to the capitals of Europe. Unfortunately, at least 20,000 works of art are unaccounted for. The Mercury salt mine in Germany, with tunnels 860 meters deep, housed the gold that the Germans had stolen from all over Europe in World War II. Today, the democratic, sensitive Germans have turned the Mercury salt mine into a recreation center. By order of the Hellenic Archaeological Service, for six months during the entire Greek Italian War, the Committee for Concealing and Securing Greek Cultural Treasures was hiding antiquities underground in Greek museums. For example, at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, the Committee for Concealment and Security of the Exhibits created pits under the floors of the museum to bury the kuri, that is, the ancient Greek sculptures depicting nude male youths, and the lekithi, that is, the vessels used for storing oil in ancient Greece. Most of the statues were placed horizontally inside these pits, sand was poured over them to protect against air raids, and the pits were sealed with cement. The books of registration and documentation of the antiquities were boxed and delivered to the general treasurer of the Bank of Greece in November 1940. Thus, in April 1941, the Germans saw a deserted museum in Athens. The Germans compiled a list of 103 sculptures with the demand that they be exhibited. Of course, this order was never carried out. The empty archaeological museum during the German occupation housed the services of the Central Post Office and the State Orchestra of Athens, while the ninth basement of the museum became the anti-aircraft shelter for the entire neighborhood. Bronze and clay objects were wrapped in wax paper or tar paper for fear of moisture and collected in boxes hidden in basements. The gold was sent to the Bank of Greece. The Nobel laureate Greek poet George Seferis describes the recovery of the statues after the end of the war. Tuesday, June 4, 1946, at the Archaeological Museum of Athens. They dig up the statues, the floor of the museum, if you didn't look at the roof windows and walls with gold inscriptions, could have been any excavation site. It was a resurrecting dance, a second presence of emerging bodies that gave you immense joy. However, Despite the efforts of the Hellenic Archaeological Service, the Germans stole many works of art from several parts of Greece. In 1946, the Minister of National Education ordered archaeologists and museum guards to compile lists of antiquities stolen by Germans. Since the Germans had also stolen the catalogues, the lists we have are incomplete. The Germans, during the occupation, removed sections of Acropolis marbles as souvenirs daily with the blessings of their officers. They were urinating and defecating at the Acropolis. While leaving Greece, they fired at statues. 
They built observatories and artillery at Sunion using ancient architectural elements. They placed tanks, weapons and ammunition in archaeological sites for their protection so that saboteurs would blow up the ancient sites. They stole a melanomorphic vase from the Museum of Keramikos illustrating the entombment of a dead man. Ancient marble amphoras were stolen from the archaeological site of Sunia. They stole antiquities from Vula, Vari, Vravrona, Koropi, Keratea, Lopesi, Egina, Heronia, Argos, Laconia, Milo, Castelliki, Samu, and they stole artifacts from the museums of Thessaloniki, Samos, Elefsina, Thiva. Since 1941, the German general Julius Rinkel started illegal excavations on the island of Crete. He took out ceramics, vases, pieces of statues. He confiscated antiquities from Villa Ariadne. He stole cultural treasures from a locked room in the Palace of Knossos. In fact, in order to fit some of the antiquities into his luggage, Ringel sewed and cut them. The Palace of Festos and the archaeological site of Malia were looted. Actually, the Germans grabbed almost all the vessels from Festos storehouses. Remains of Minoan civilization, which flourished 4,000 years earlier, were erased from the map once and for all. The archaeologist Nicolos Platon was one of the unlikely heroes of occupied Greece in World War II, defending the country's monuments at all costs. Platon arranged for several statues to be buried in the garden of the Heraklion Archaeological Museum in Crete and for a metal gate to be installed at the entrance to the basement to protect antiquities from plunder. He held the keys to the gate and refused to hand them over to the occupiers. He slept in the museum to ward off ambitious looters. Though Platon was unable to prevent plundering in other parts of the island of Crete, he refers to the theft of three boxes of ancient objects, such as Minon potteries and a Hellenistic headless statue that was sewn to be packed in order to fit in Ringel's luggage. Recently, the University of Kratz handed over some of the stolen relics. The official catalogue of thefts and looting perpetrated by Germans during the war was published by the Greek state in 1946 and includes 8,500 classical Hellenistic and Byzantine treasures stolen from museums and excavations as well as 460 paintings. The historical researcher George Slikakis tells us that, according to what is sold in the auction houses today, the cost of the 8,500 objects only would reach 1 trillion euros. Moreover, according to the official catalogue, the Germans pillaged 87 archaeological sites destroyed monuments of art, Byzantine and popular architecture, churches and mansions. Destruction totaling $15.8 billion, 1938, that is $1.5 trillion today at 3% interest rate. Among other disasters caused by the Germans is the blowing up of the ancient quarry of Gordina, or Labyrinth of Gordina, whose stone served to build 150 ancient cities in Crete as well as the Minoan Palace of Estos. It was a huge artificial cave with labyrinthine corridors more than 2.5 kilometers long. Many researchers place the mythical labyrinth of the Minotaur in this cave because of its many labyrinthine arcades and dead ends. With the labors of hundreds of Cretans, corridors and railway lines were created so that the Germans could transport and store thousands of shells, mines, ammunition, 
over 300 tons with which they supplied Rommel's army in Libya. Leaving Crete in the fall of 1944, the Germans, with electric ignition, blew it up and it became one of the biggest explosions. Boulders of 10 to 15 tons were thrown up to 10 kilometers away and the hill disappeared into a lunar landscape. The speleologist researcher Anna Petrochilou, in 1985, explored and mapped the labyrinth cave. She writes, It is the only cave in the whole world which has carved rooms of various shapes and sizes with carved seats, tiered or simple tables, altars, couches, carved walls and supporting columns. All executed with a unique artistic performance and precision admirable for the modern era. But few can visit it today because, as advised, any work inside the cave is dangerous due to its static inadequacy and the spoilage of munitions that are scattered, wedged in the walls or crushed. The minimum required of Germany is to undertake the cleaning of the cave and the removal of all ammunition. And this is the third kind of German debt to Greece, a debt towards the state. If one wanted to put a market value on the artifacts stolen by the Germans, it would come to 1.5 trillion euros in today's currency. In fact, these are priceless treasures and they should be repatriated. Let the Germans keep copies, but they must return the originals to the country from where they were stolen. The following organizations participate in our Committee on German Debts. International Hellenic Association, Canadian Hellenic Congress, Hellenic American National Council, the Livani Foundation.